Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 1-1 in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now there's where we got to stop. Because science does not believe that. Atheists don't believe it. Many religions don't, don't believe it. And yet in our Bible, we hold the science and historical textbook written by God. We begin with God, the creator of all things. Beginning, God created the heaven and earth. It's made by God. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, this plain and simple between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2, there is a gap. God made the heaven and earth. There was judgment upon the earth. There was judgment upon Lucifer, the fallen being from heaven upon this earth Isaiah 14 and his angels maybe dinosaurs because we will see again as we go through the Bible that he is the reptilian class of the cerebums there was war intergalactical war between God and Satan and God judged the earth like we will see later on he will judge the earth with water a worldwide flood he'll later on He'll burn the entire earth in heaven. And the earth was without form. It was not made that way. It became that way. And void. That means empty. And darkness was, was upon the face of the deep. And now we see opposite of Genesis. I mean Revelation 21 and 22. In the absence of God there is darkness and no light. For Jesus said I am the light of the world. God is the light. Without him, it's dark. This is the judgment of God. This is what hell's going to be like. It's going to be dark because God's not going to be there. The face of the deep, that's the solar system. And the waters, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, now we see the first part of the Trinity. With scripture, with scripture, with First John. The Gospel of John 1.1 1, 1. Jesus Christ is the Word. So we see God first. The first verses of the chapter. We see the Holy Spirit showing up in the second verse. Which is interesting because the Holy Spirit shows up second. And Jesus Christ showing up third in the third verse. With God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is here when God speaks. And we'll read in Galatians, Lord willing, that Jesus created. And God said, let there be light. And there was light without sun, without moon, without the stars. This is the light of God coming back to this planet. They say the earth is billions and millions and billions of years old. That could be a true statement according to the Bible. Man is 6,000 years old. We don't know when the earth. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light. First mention of light. First mention of God. First mention of the Holy Spirit. First mention of God speaking. First few, Bible, first few verses of your Bible. It was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. 
without the sun, without the moon. God divided himself from the wicked of Satan. This is me. This is Satan. And already now you see four verses into the Bible. Division, which is a Bible doctrine. You are to separate yourselves or you will lose rewards. God separates himself from light and from dark. What, what, what concord do we have with Belial or with God? None. To be un, unequally yoked with unbelievers. None. And God called the light capital D, day. And the darkness he called capital N, night. There is day and night before the sun, moon, and stars. Time has begun. And time does not begin with the seasons, it begins with God. And when we get the, back to Revelation chapter 19 and 20, we will see time quits. There's eternity past, before Genesis 1-2, before Genesis 1-4 and 5. Then we got time, we are living in time now. But Revelation 19 and 20, time quits. And we go off in eternity. There is no 1,000 year. There are no wristwatches. There are no clocks. There are no calendars. Time has been given for man, and we'll see in a little bit what time is for. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So we see the first day of creation, light and dark. No Big Bang. It's an absolute day. It's an absolute night without no sun. God is the author of time and not the sun. And God said, what shows you another thing too is our calendars are wrong because our calendars are based upon a Roman system. God is not Roman. And God said, let there be a firmament, firm, in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Another division. And God made the firmament and divided the waters from the water, the waters which were under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, capital H. And even in the morning were the second day. So when we see in Revelation, when we see the throne of God, we see it as a crystal sea. There it is. The waters. From the waters of the waters, you got the solar system. On top of that firmament is heaven. God's abode. Under that firmament, you got the earth. Paul says there are three heavens. From the dirt of the earth to the clouds. From the clouds to God's throne. And then God's throne. And God called the firmament heaven. And the even and the morning were the second day. Still no sun, no moon. A Jewish night is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. The Jewish day is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You need to think about that when you're trying to date anything. And God said, through Jesus Christ, the word, Let the waters under heaven be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear also. And it was so. So what state was the earth in up to now? It was watered bound. The universe was under ice. And when they say ice age, there was an ice age. And God came and shed his light upon it and took the waters of that ice and divided and made dry land. God called the dry land Earth, capital E. So where did the name of Earth come from? It came from God. And the gathering and the gathering together of the waters he calls seas. 
Now remember, this is not the same earth that we are living under right now. We're going to get a worldwide flood. We're going to get a point with, with Peleg that the earth is going to somehow rip itself. And then all the years from this time, we don't know how, but from this time, think about how water has changed land. It changes. Rivers change. And God saw that it was good. By the way, God saw it was good. God saw it was good. He never saw the firmament good. Everything's been good, but not the firmament. Why? Because Paul will tell us later on that the firmament holds principalities, uh, powers, and princes. When you talk about the firmament, that dark outer space, you are talking about the realm of Satan. When you send spaceships out of there, you are on dangerous ground. You may bring somebody back one day. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Apples cannot bring pears. Oranges cannot bring raspberries. And yet man has gone with science to change the a tree can produce six or seven types of fruit. And man's food today, thanks to science, has been polluted. We are having more cases of cancer ever than a lifetime that man has ever been. Because science is messing with what God created. God said a fruit tree will bear the fruit of that tree you are not to interfere with what that tree produces. And that's what science has done. Tree yielded fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Open up an apple and there's the seeds. Open up an orange, there's the seeds. Upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. And people spend millions and billions of dollars a year on grass. And herb, yielding seed after his kind. Peppermint brings peppermint. Rosemary brings rosemary. And that is to, to flavor our food. God has given us a, 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 a plant that we can have flavoring. He's given us fruit that we can enjoy. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good another it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day now how to be in the process of time that God one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day as we enter off into the four thousand day of Genesis 1 as some will teach it that these are one thousand year periods The plant would have died because the sun shows up in the next day. There are people, I don't know how they can do it, but they will teach that this is a thousand years. The plants are a thousand years in darkness. You say, well, God said let there be light, but there's also night. And we're going to see that the sun and the moon and the stars are going to have a primary concern upon earth for a reason and when you look at God said let there be light and God said let there be a sun and a moon and stars we need to realize that when Paul is on the road to Damascus he's out there in a noonday sun and all of a sudden there was this light from heaven that overpowered the new day sun in a desert region of Palestine we do not see the light that we saw the light verses 1 through 5. You will see that light when you are absent from the body, present with the Lord, or raptured, whichever comes first. Now in verse 14, this is the light that's been shining on this earth since the fourth day. And this is the only light that has shined on the earth since the fourth day. 
fourth day. And we do see illustrations in the Bible where God did shine his light. But that was for special miracle uh, presentations only. So God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs. Jews require signs later on. He made something for the Jews long before the Jews even showed up. Up to present navigational electronics, sailors would use those stars as navigational aids. A farmer would look up in the sky and say, this is spring. I need to plant this crop. And for seasons, summer, spring, fall, winter, for days and years, time has now begun for man. There it is. Before this verse, before the fourth day, there was really no time. Except for the first day, the second day, the third day. Now we get man's day. Before Genesis 1, 2, you were in eternity. There was no time. So man has now ticked his clock. And when the clock begins on Genesis 1, 14, we are ticking closer and closer to the birth and death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God has already set the forth of the Passover day, the 14th of Abed. At 6 p.m., Jesus Christ is going to be crucified and suffer and die, and Adam's not even around yet. But God foreknew from the foundation of the world that lamb would be slain. God already knew it. God has set forth time for his son to suffer, die, and bury. And we have also set forth the clock that when Jesus Christ is going to come for his church, the rapture. I don't know when. We have set forth a time here that will be the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. We have set forth the time for seven years. Of that tribulation period. We have set forth the time to the second advent of Jesus Christ. And we have set forth the time here that time will end in Revelation 19. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Notice heaven, small a. These are your stars, your suns, your moons, your other planets. It's the power of voice. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, we know that's the sun, the type of Christ. Malachi 4.3 The lesser light to rule the night, and we know that's the type of church. Song of Solomon 6. 18. Look at my notes here. The night is the church age. The dawning of the sun is the second advent. And as a side note, he made the stars also. Psalm 147.4 and 8.3. He knows these stars all by name and he knows how many there are. With all the stars that man can't even count, he tells Abraham, if you can count those stars, that's how much the number of your seed is. We get a P.S. God made two great lights, and the great light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. We know that's the sun and moon. And P.S., he made the stars also. Wow. All them stars, and they're known by God. And God set them in the firmament. So we know what the firmament is. Where is the sun? Where are the stars? Where is the moon? It's in that darkness. We are in that firmament. And to divide the light from the darkness. Again, divisions all the way through the Bible. And God saw that it was good. So time, the sun, the moon, the stars are good to God. 
except for when man will use them for horoscopes and use them to worship the host of heaven. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life. That's the first time that shows up in the Bible, life. And it's talking about marine animals. And so what do you see man doing? You gotta save the sea cow. You gotta save the turtles. You gotta save the whales. You gotta give those animals life. And they're following the King James Bible and they don't even know it. There have been no life on this earth from this creation period except for the marine animals and the fowls. And the fowls that fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So the birds fly in that firmament. And if you read your Bible correct, it looks like winged animals come from the oceans. That's almost a kind of thing what evolution says, we come from the oceans. No, not man. The marine animals and the birds look like they come from the ocean. You almost got it right. We'll give you an F for not giving God the credit. And God created great whales. So God knows what a whale is. Even though scholars don't. And that's important later on. And these are mammals. God created great whales in every living creature that moveth which the water brought forth abundantly after their kind goldfish bring forth goldfish shrimp produces shrimp and every winged fowl after his kind chickens produce chickens and God saw that it was good and again now we're in the realm of science they're trying to cross breed animals Science is doing us more bad than good. Now, with this classification, we got water animals. Marine life, we got fowls. Notice how God gives a special classification to great whales. Whales, creatures that move in the waters, and fowls that fly. God knows from the beginning a whale is not just a marine animal. And I believe God did that to mesh up evolution. Because a whale is a mammal that gives birth and suck to live whales. That defies evolution. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas, and let every fowl multiply in the earth. He's talking to the animals, as the cartoons would have you to see. And he gives them a commission. Go out and make other little whatever you are. If you're a chicken, make other chicks. If you're a fish, make more fish. If you're a whale, make more whales. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now notice God here, because we're going to see something weird with Adam and Eve. He provides male and female to the animals so they can do what they need to do. The sexual impact of animals are not like humans. You need a male and a female, but a lot of animals do not reproduce their young such as how a man does. Some reptiles will lay eggs and then the male will come along and fertilize them. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Cattle, creepy things. And beasts of the earth after his kind it was so. So now we get cows, ants, goats, land animals. I don't know where the mosquito in them would come from and the fly. Because of, huh? Because the thing is, the fowls that fly, well, we know what a fly, you know, turkey and all that. And the land animals and creepy things, but mosquitoes, those weird mosquitoes and those flies, Beelzebub, they're neither fowl, they're neither marine life, and they're neither mammals. And come from the earth? 
I mean, really, I think flies and mosquitoes are somehow of Satan. But I can't prove that. And the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Cows produce cows. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, cow for a cow, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth on the earth, worms, after his kind. And God saw it was good. And God said, Let there may, let us, us. Well, who is God speaking to? Himself. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Jesus Christ. We just spent four days, all of us working together to do this. Now let us make man, that's the first time man shows up, in our image, after our likeness, and the Roman Catholics could never get this correct. They will say today that we are made in the image of God. Sinners? Is God a sinner? Was Jesus Christ a sinner? Because that's what the image we are. And later on we'll see that we are made in Adam's image. And we'll see in the New Testament we are of Adam. Our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. We are in charge of the fish. And over the fowl of the air, we are in charge of the chickens. We can fricassee them. We can rotisserie them. We can barbecue them. We can do whatever you want to those chickens. Over the cattle, we can milk them. We can make them hamburgers. Over all the earth, we are in charge until we give it to Satan. And over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth, that's why we have bug spray. We can control them. But we can't. There's so many of them. So God created man in his own image. Animals fear God. Animals fear man because God put man in charge. Most of the time when you are attacked by an animal, a snake, dog, whatever it is, most of the time it's because that animal fears you. That snake will coil up because he sees you as a threat. Otherwise than that, he'd just be swithering around. When that dog growls, it's telling you, don't you come near me. I don't like you. So God created man in his own image. And in the image God created, he, him, this would be Adam. Now, another thing we got a problem in America today, in the world. Male and female created he, them. You are in male or you are a female. In the eyes of God, if you're anything else, you're an abomination to God, according to the scripture. There is no mother yet. There is no father yet. Adam and Eve did not have a belly button. I can imagine when Cain and Abel were born, they're like, whoa, they got a hole in their belly. And maybe went to uh, God, uh, something wrong with our children? Uh, that's just something that a, a parent passes on to a child, a, a mother, the belly button. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Jesus Christ, 1 John, John 1.1, 1, 1, speaking unto man, be fruitful, make babies, and multiply, and replenish. Re means to do over. So Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and Genesis 1.2, there was something here on this planet and when God speaks to man, he says, I want you to do it over again. But with your kind. There was an inhabitation of someone or something on this planet before Genesis 1-2. That God had to judge out and wipe out. 
And now when we have a recreated Earth, taken out of the Dark Age, taken out of the Ice Age, now there's life. God says, do it again. Fill it. Refill. And it's funny because when you get over here, back over here, it says in verse 22, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters of the sea, and let the fowls multiply in the earth. There's no replenishing there. Marine life and birds are something new. You cannot say in the periodic table of life of evolution that there were turkeys and chickens and sea life. No. Because God would have told them replenish also. He did not tell them to replenish. Those animals are something new. And I'm going to say with that aspect and stick my neck out there and I can be wrong. I don't think those animals are going to show up in New Jerusalem, the New Earth, and the New Heavens. They weren't there in the beginning. I'm talking about the very beginning. These animals is man's food. You realize if because you don't eat octopus, someone else does. You may not like scallops. Somebody else does. You may not like jerk. I don't like jerky. Somebody else does. They're man's food. And subdue it. Be under the cultivation. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Men go fishing. Fish don't go menin. And over the fowls of the earth. Besides Elijah, when was the last time you ever saw a bird build a human house outside of their tree so humans can come along and get fed? And yet we feed them. We make them birdhouses. We make them seed law so they can come and get food from us. And we have the power to, you know, grab one, to kill one, and to eat it. Or make it pets. When was the last time you went to a dog's house and he had a bunch of humans there laying around and waiting for the, the dogs to feed them? It's don't happen. You know, you know how people will try to change that? They'll try to give you a book about a boy who grew up in the wild with apes and lions and whatever other. I never, I never read or watched those movies. They're trying to get you away from the Bible and get, get you away from what God has told man. You need to get away from that stuff. In the places of California and Florida and Europe, that world. That messes up with the Bible. We have authority over the animals. And people have gone even to the most extreme by Satan. Save the whales. Save the manatees. Save the... No. You're supposed to save your soul. An animal does not get saved. Follow the air over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We're in charge of. If we don't want ants in our house, we spray and put traps and hire an exterminator. And they can't come knocking the door saying, you know, by the word of God, stop killing us. And God said, and through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Which is upon the face of all the earth, earth. And every tree. In which is the fruit. Of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. Produce. And vegetables and herbs. With man's original diet. So when somebody comes up to you. And say well excuse me Christian. If you look at your teeth. Your teeth were made to be vegetarian teeth. Yes, they were. You're right. Man was not given the ability to eat meat and animals until after Noah stepped out of the ark. And that great realm, of these, these religions that get you back to having a salad and no ham, they're trying to get you back 
in the days of Adam all over again. But God, through Noah, and God, through the mention of Paul, says if we can thank what God has given us, we may eat. A person in the church age can, de can devour food that is unlawful for a Jew in the law if we can thank what God's given us. But man in the very beginning until after the flood were vegetarians. And notice how the word meat is used. It's used as a dietary. Because that's what man could eat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, for, and it was so. Animals were vegetarians too. Tell that to the person that, well, the humans were vegetarians, well, so were lions. What do you do with their teeth? And in the way, there would have to be a control environment by God. Because if man did not hunt meat and animals, they would overpopulate the world. Before the fall of Adam and Eve, God would have somehow would have been limitations on birth. I don't know what they would have been because we are fallen under the curse. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. We're talking about man. In the eyes of God over animals getting saved and witnessing to your dog, God said, man is very good. So much is so that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. God's not willing that any should perish. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And we stop there. Now God has finished his work. That Romans chapter 1 says that people who have been. We'll go back. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. We'll read that. For people about evolution. Romans chapter 1, Paul will tell us the other side of the story. In Romans chapter 1, verse 19, Because that which, that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, and God it, God the Holy Spirit Jesus, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, remember I said about being thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And no more of that verse put upon a television program about a certain professor on an island. With all his winningness, with all his diplomas, with all that he knew, he could never get them off the island. That television sitcom spoke of professors like the Bible speaks of them. They're foolish. And like I said, there are professors today in science changing our food against God. And you're going to reap what you sow. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. Genesis 1 Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth the creation of God of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature Genesis 1 
more than the Creator, Genesis 1, who is blessed forever. Man and his evolution of going against Genesis 1 are not blessed. So when you say God loves a sinner, what do you do with somebody who has changed the Genesis 1 account onto a scientific account and made the animals God instead of God who made the animals? You are now on some serious trouble. That's why I said, in the beginning, God. Not many people can get across those words and into the Bible. They stumble that in the beginning God, they don't know who God is, they don't want to know who God is, there is no God, created the heaven and earth, and that's where you got to stop again because it was all the Big Bang. And the more you go day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six, they disapprove what God has done, and then they drop out, and they don't go to Genesis 2, and they don't go read the rest of the Bible, because it goes against what they taught, and they'll be damned. For not believing. A person who has to be saved for the etern eternal life of Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, according to Scripture, was buried and arose again the third day, according to Scriptures. You cannot witness to that guy and get that guy to be saved and deny that God's Creator. The belief that God is the creator is one of the things necessary for salvation. If you're dealing with an evolutionist, you've got to get him out of that evolution before he can get to Jesus. Because he would have an animal God. And you can't be saved by an animal God. Now look at all the gods of the world. When, when they told Aaron, we don't know what happened to Moses. What did Aaron make? Supposedly just came out of the book. It came out of the fire. I don't know what it was. It was a calf. You look at the Egyptian gods. They got animal faces. There are Christians that worship the dove. Nowhere in the Bible will it tell you to worship an animal but God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. People worship whales. They worship the sea gods. No, it's never to be told. We are not to have our mind on the creation. But we're to get our mind on the creator. So... That's Genesis 1.